What's up YouTube, Amanda here, and I've been meaning to shoot this video for quite some time now, but I recently just got back from Disney's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and I bought a lot of really cool stuff, and I wanted to show you exactly what I got, including the infamous Black Crystal. Yes, I did get a real Black Crystal when I was down there. I was shocked and super excited, and I'll tell you guys all about it, but yeah, I wanted to show you guys my Star Wars Galaxy's Edge haul. So starting off, I am going to show you guys the less expensive and free items I got from Galaxy's Edge, moving up to the most expensive items. So starting off, I am going to show you guys the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge map. Uh, this is the map that you get right before you enter the land. It is different than the map that you guys get in the actual park. But yeah, it's a really nice quality map, and it shows you pretty much all of just the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge stuff, and it also has that really cool... Uh, Arabish language in there. It's actually a nice quality map, so if you wanted to hang it up or display it, you could absolutely do so. I figured, why not take one? They look really cool. But yeah, there is the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge map. Next up, if you are lucky enough to go to Oga's Cantina, it's always the most busiest attraction there. Uh, I got a set of the Oga's Cantina coasters. So, for those who don't know, you do get a regular coaster when you are at Oga's Cantina. There are five variants though, uh, and if you're really nice to your bartender, my bartender's name was Amanda too, uh, she gave me all five variants of the coasters. So I will show you each one of those. So there's the first one, very cool. Here is the second one. And again, the back's the same, but that's the second one. Third one, which is very, this is a very cool design, I think. There you go. Fourth one. And the last one, which is that. Yeah, I love these. I actually plan on making these as like real coasters. I may put them on some wood and then polyurethane it. So they can actually be like functioning coasters. So yeah, very cool. Uh, just another cool uh, item that you can get pretty much for free if you're able to go to Oga's Cantina. Just be nice to your bartender and they'll hook you up. All right, so the next item is technically free if you're planning on spending at least $100 at Galaxy's Edge or Disney in general. Uh, these are the Spiras or Spiras. I'm not really sure how to correctly pronounce it. I think it's Spiras, but pretty much these are uh, $100 gift cards uh, and if you put $100 on it, you get to keep this, and it's pretty much like a souvenir. You don't have to pay extra for it, but you can use them in the land, and they're very cool and very detailed. So I actually ended up purchasing two of them because I knew I would spend at least $200, but yeah, you load 100 bucks on this, and after that, you get to keep this, so it's pretty much a free souvenir after that, and you can reload them and use them all around Disney. Uh, but I will give you one little just tidbit of advice. I'm hearing that sometimes some of them aren't working, so make sure you keep your receipt if you're planning on keeping these, uh, because if you don't have the receipt, some of them are unlike unable to track that you've actually bought anything from this. So um, yeah, make sure you hold on to your receipt, but yeah, also very cool little souvenir that you can get pretty much for free if you're willing to spend at least $100 at Galaxy's Edge or Disney in general, which I mean, you're at Disney, it's kind of expected. So next up, I think I'm a little stupid for holding onto this, but I had to. I'm a big Star Wars fan and I love Galaxy's Edge, but yes, I got the Dasani water bottle. Uh, it's got the Arabish language on there. This is the only place you can get uh, Dasani water bottles with, you know, the Arabish language on there. So I was like, yeah, why not? I'll keep it, but hey, I'll take what I can get at Galaxy's Edge for real. And of course, not only did I get the Dasani water bottle, I got all three of the Coke thermal detonator bottles. Yes, these are freaking awesome. However, they're a pain to fly with. Yes, the TSA has cleared these for like check baggage, which is what I did. However, they still look like little bombs and they will sift through all of your suitcase. And when you bought hundreds and hundreds of dollars of Galaxy's Edge stuff, it's very nerve wracking. Uh, I was really nervous that they were going to break something or take something. And I've also heard some of the TSA members are actually taking off the caps of these and just like throwing them out, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of the thermal detonator Coke bottles. But 
By the way, I finally got them home. We're good. They're amazing. I will never drink these. They're definitely collectibles and I love them. They're awesome. I definitely recommend you getting some if you're planning on ever going down to Galaxy's Edge. All right, so these next items I'm gonna show you are actually my favorite purchases from Galaxy's Edge and they are the Jedi and Sith Holocrons. So for those who don't know what Holocrons are, they pretty much hold like sacred Jedi messages or uh, you know, Sith, Sith messages, depending on which one you buy. Uh, this is the Jedi one, so I will turn it on and show you guys exactly what it does. Here we go. Uh, and what you're supposed to do with these is there is a little box on the side here and you insert kyber crystals and each kyber crystal has a message from a certain Jedi depending on what color you get. So this does come with a generic one without a crystal. So I will show you what that one looks like. This is Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. All right, so that is young Obi-Wan Kenobi. Next up, I'll show you guys some of the other kyber crystals I have. I actually purchased over 15, I think. I got sucked in the hole of kyber crystals and you will too if you really get into these. But I will show you a few other kyber crystals that you can put in the Jedi one so you can hear exactly what they sound like. All right, so let's put in the green one. And now it is green. If you know anything about Star Wars, the chances of what voice is going to be on the green one is probably either gonna be Yoda or Qui-Gon Jinn. So let's see which one we got. Train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. So we get some wise words from Yoda. Uh, I luckily didn't get very many duplicates. I think I got maybe two duplicates. Uh, out of 15 is really not that bad. So uh, let me show you another one. So obviously purple is probably gonna be uh, Mace Windu here. So I'm gonna purple. And as you can see, kind of, it's bright in here. I'll turn off the lights and show you guys a close up of what they look like, but here is the purple one. In negotiations, there are gray areas. In war, there are not. A warrior can't afford them. There's only right and wrong, good and evil, light and dark, and victory or defeat. So yeah, we got Mace Windu here. Uh, we'll do one more really quick. This is the Jedi Temple Guard. Let me pop that in. I know it's probably hard to see, but uh, it is yellow now. I uphold the traditions of the guard, but command no troops. To be a temple guard is not a specialty or a profession. It is a sacred duty to which any Jedi Knight or Master may be summoned. So yeah, that is the Jedi Holocron. Next up, I will show you guys the Sith Holocron. So here is the Sith Holocron. In order to activate it, you're just going to turn this little knob here at the top. And then the slot to put the kyber crystals in is right on the side here. It's kind of hard to see. You open it up like that. And the thing with the red kyber crystals is it's a little harder to get what characters you want uh, versus the Jedi kyber crystals, just because you kind of know what you're gonna get with the Jedi kyber crystals. If you get green, you're probably gonna get Yoda or Qui-Gon Jinn. If you get purple, you're probably gonna get Mace Windu, so. But with the red ones, uh, all of the characters are only red, so it's really hard to get, you know, which characters you want, and there's a lot higher chance of getting duplicates. Uh, there's Count Dooku, Darth Maul, uh, Palpatine, Darth Vader, uh, all sorts of different characters with the red. But anyway, here's a red kyber crystal. I will pop it into the Sith Holocron. Let's see which character we got. In order to hear it, you're just gonna hold the sides here, so. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. So if you could only get one item from Galaxy's Edge, I would definitely get 
one of the holocrons and at least a couple of kyber crystals so yeah but before we move on i do want to show you guys pretty much the highlight of my galaxy's edge trip and that was getting yes the black kyber crystal and yes this is the real deal i have the little piece of paper to prove it there's the paper and no i did not do the flashlight trick there are black paper now just to block people from actually doing the flashlight trick so i did get it honestly i got super lucky and i was super excited and it was amazing but i will show you guys pretty much what the red kyber crystal does in the holocron here let's pop it out put this one away and let me turn on the black kyber crystal So I'm going to hold the sides. When I found you, oh, I saw what all masters live to see. Raw, untamed power. And beyond that, something truly special. So yeah, we got Snoke from The Last Jedi. So yeah, the Black Kyber Crystals are actually pretty rare. Uh, in fact, when I got mine, it was the first time the employees at Black Spire Outpost ever saw one. So I had an entire like crowd of people taking pictures of it. I was literally holding onto it with a death grip because I was scared somebody may take it. They were limiting the red kyber crystals to two per person just because everyone was buying up the kyber crystals trying to get the uh, black kyber crystal. So they stopped doing that. Uh, you're only allowed two per person. So luckily, uh, I got lucky and got one of the two as uh, the black kyber crystal. So very excited about it. I love it. Super cool. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is a lot of fun to build. Uh, and they are a lot of fun to play around with in the actual land. But we've got, we have an R2 unit. Uh, I got the black body with the black legs. And I purchased the um, little panels that you can get because I love orange. Orange is my favorite color. I actually haven't come up with a name for him yet, so I'm hoping in the comments below you guys will help me come up with a really creative name for him, but let me show you exactly how he works. So he does come with a remote control uh, when you're building your droid at the droid, the droid depot. Um, and he's got a little button here at the bottom. All right, he's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my controller here on the back, and he should activate. So yeah, we have that classic R2 sound. He does move. I'm telling you guys, these things are so fun. Look, woo! So yeah, that is R2. He does move his head around as well. And I actually plan on painting this and making it super customizable. Uh, but yeah, I love this guy. He's the coolest. Do a little spin around. Okay, very cool, yeah. I agree, R2. Super cool. I love having you. I literally can play with them all day, guys. Seriously. All right, so not only did I get the R2 unit, but I also caved in and got a BB unit. So let me show you my little BB unit here. Isn't he so freaking cute? I love him so much. I love both of these so much, but... Let me go ahead and show you guys exactly how he works. Again, he has a remote control for him. So he does move. I don't want him to fall though, so. <laughs> but yes, this is our BB unit. I love this guy. Again, I don't have a name for him though. So definitely help me in the comments below. Uh, and the cool thing about these droids as well is uh, they actually do communicate with each other. So if you <laughs> have them both on, they actually do talk with each other, which is really, really cool. And also when you're in the land, they do actually interact with the land. So they do have Bluetooth in them and they can react uh, depending on where you're at in the land. So if you are in the first order area, they may get a little nervous. If you're in the resistance or, uh, area, they may get a little more cheerful. But yeah, it, these things are really, really cool. I definitely recommend if you're going to go to Galaxy's Edge more than once, definitely pick yourself up a droid. But also, if you are planning on doing multiple trips with your droid, I definitely recommend picking up one of these droid backpacks here. Uh, these sell out pretty 
fast. If you're able to get one, definitely grab one. Uh, the great thing about the uh, droid backpacks here is you can put your droid inside and then you can open up this little, oh, see, they're talking. It's not me. See, he's talking. I love that. But yes, you can put your BB unit or your R2 unit in here and they can actually see what's going on. So we will uh, we'll put BB in the backpack here. And there you go, here is BB in the backpack. He can see exactly what's going on. Now one thing I do wanna talk about, if you are planning on getting a BB unit down there and you wanna get a droid backpack, there is a little leash in the back here. Let's see if you guys can see it, but it's right at the top. And it's a little metal, metal leash, and it actually connects to the back of BB-8's head. So there's a little part right here where the leash connects onto. And you just hook it on. All right, so I got mine hooked on. I can put BB-8's head back on. Uh, and definitely, definitely do that. I did see my BB unit uh, head move around a lot when you're moving around in the park. Uh, and that's there so you don't actually lose the head. I bet there's gonna be some really unhappy kids when they get home and they find that their BB unit is not all there because his head is gone. So definitely use that leash when you're walking around the park. We have here some of the personality chips. So these can actually go into the unit and it will change their personality. So I have a smuggler's chip here, it's purple. Uh, I've got a first order chip, make him a bad guy, right here. And then I also have a resistance chip and it is the blue chip. So I'll put in the first order chip into the R unit here. Put that over there and he has a little door here that opens up. It's on the front here. Let's see if I can do this. Open that up. And then you insert the chip like this. And now he is a first order droid. So let's go ahead and give it a listen to see what he sounds like now. So yeah, that's what the first order personality chip sounds like. I'm gonna pop it out. And now he's back to his regular R2 unit. And now we'll listen to him again. So yeah, totally different sounds. There are several different variants of the personality chips, very similar to the Kyber crystals. So again, they're very fun to collect and hear the difference of the personality chips. Also with my R unit, I did pick up some blasters that you could put on the sides of his arm here. Also, I told you guys earlier that I did buy these panels separately uh, and they came in this pack here. So I just put the ones I actually picked when I built the R unit uh, in here so I can just hold on to them and keep them. But yes, I changed them out for all orange. So yeah, you can get all sorts of really cool things with the R unit uh, versus the BB unit. Unfortunately, you can't buy a lot of accessories for the BB unit, but you can get several accessories for the R unit. So if that's something that may dissuade you uh, into buying one of the other, if you want more accessories, definitely get the R unit, but both of them are great. All right, last but not least, and definitely the most expensive purchases I made at Galaxy's Edge, I did end up building three of the Savvy's Workshop lightsabers, and I will show you guys each one that I got. The experience of Savvy's Workshop in building your own lightsaber is amazing. It is so worth the money uh, and it's a lot of fun and it's definitely a great memory. I actually went with my dad. He's a big Star Wars fan. He ended up building one uh, and pretty much gave me his. So I will show you guys mine and his and a third one that I bought. Uh, and the cool thing about the lightsabers is they do also take the kyber crystal. So if you get a red kyber crystal, you can put it in your lightsaber and it will turn your blade red. Uh, if you put a blue one in, it will turn it blue and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, let me show you guys the very first one I built and that is the Peace and Justice Saber. And here it is right here. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. This was my first choice. I absolutely love this thing. It's beautiful. Uh, it's very, very heavy. So be careful. Definitely just don't walk around with it uh, in the park. 
you know, you may break it or break someone. Um, if you accidentally drop this, they do come with a saber sheath at the end of the building experience. But yeah, so in order to uh, put the kyber crystal in, you unscrew it here. And I think there's one already in there, but yeah. So we have a green kyber crystal in there. Just pop that back in, twist it. So unfortunately the batteries are dead. I've played with this thing so much, but I'll show you another one, but this is what the Peace and Justice Saber looks like. So yeah, there is the Peace and Justice Saber and you do get a Peace and Justice pin that is exclusive to the Peace and Justice Saber when you build one. Next up, my dad built the Elemental Nature one. This seems to be everyone's favorite online, I've noticed. Uh, but yes, we've got the Rancor tooth uh, and we've got the leather wrap and we've got the, uh, I guess it's like a wood texture uh, piece here. And yeah, this is my dad's. I love this one as well. It's beautiful. Uh, this, yeah, like I said, this tends to be uh, everyone's first choice. So again, in order to put the kyber crystal in, it goes in the middle, pop the activation plate. We've got a blue kyber crystal in there. Twist this back. And of course I don't have a blade, so it actually will not activate, but it will give a sound saying that it's trying. So you just heard it there. So that's what it sounds like without the blade. So that is elemental nature. All right, so my last saber I built was the protection and defense. So fun fact, I actually did not like the design when I saw this before online of other people buying it uh, before I went. And then when I actually saw it in person, it's definitely tied with my favorite. Uh, it's again, very, very heavy. And this seems to be people's second favorite. Um, so yeah, this is the protection and defense. Again, you do get a little protection and defense pin here. But I will pop in a blade so you guys can actually see what it looks like. So here is the blade. All right, in order to actually insert the blade, there are two little grooves. What you do is insert it, you'll hear a noise, and then twist, and it's in. So I'll go ahead and activate it. And that is the Savvy's Workshop lightsabers, guys. I absolutely love these things. I definitely recommend doing it if you can afford it. Uh, it. Like I said, you're paying for the experience as well, and it's really, really worth it. I actually am going back down to Galaxy's Edge in a couple of months, and I plan on doing another whole haul. I hope to get my hands on Sabacc. Unfortunately, uh, the Sabacc card game was sold out when I went. But uh, hopefully I can get it. And I also want to get some legacy lightsabers. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see another haul when I do go. Uh, also let me know in the comments below if you guys are ever going to go to Galaxy's Edge. And what are you guys looking forward to buying? Absolutely love everything I got from Galaxy's Edge. I will be paying off this trip for quite some time. But it was well worth it. Uh, and yeah, so that is it for this video, guys. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you guys get an alarm every time I make a new video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.